back to the Holiday Brigade. This time we are squishing two holidays into one because I like chaos. <laughs> oh, joy. This kid doesn't love chaos, so we're going to start in medium res with two of you waking up. No idea where you are, no memory of the last couple of hours, no idea how you got to where you are. Oh no. And let's have a roll plus sharp to see who figures out the thing first. Oh yeah. Who notices first? That's gonna be a ten for me. That's only a seven for Enoch. I got a ten that time. I mean, that makes sense in the story, cause Alara, cause you're starting to wake up, you realize you feel like you're taking up more space than you should. Oh no. Okay. And it's just like, it's weird. It's discombobulating. You kind of look down, look around. You think like, did Enoch fall asleep on top of me? And then Enoch, as you wake up. Oh no. You feel like you're a lot smaller and also it's like the magic within you feels very different. Mm. And you wake up, look up, look at each other and think you're looking in the mirror and then you realize, wait. Oh no. This isn't my body. You've been body swapped. <laughs> this isn't right. He now just drops to his knees. Why did we watch Freaky Friday? <laughs> oh no. You're me, but I'm you. <laughs> How did this happen? Hawthorne, what did you do? What did I do? This is has you written all over it, Enoch. You have the magic. You're the one that released that leprechaun. I don't like this. I'm tiny and small and I can't... I feel like if I punch something, my hand's gonna break. How do you live like this? And now my stomach is making weird noises and I want to eat a sandwich. You better watch what you eat. I'm on a strict diet. Would someone like to investigate a mystery to see if you can start piecing together what's going on? Happily. Fun meta comment before Jess had to call out. Enoch, you are going to wake up as Mrs. Stax. Oh, no. <laughs> and then Mrs. Stax is going to be Hawthorne, and Hawthorne was going to be Enoch. <laughs> so that's a seven. That makes sense. It's a seven. Okay. Get one question. Oh. Okay, I have to know what happened here. Did you hear him? Yeah, I was just trying to remember. Don't you have a, don't you have a forensic divination thing for investigate a mystery? Or was it mes investigate a mystery or read a bad situation? Uh, forensic divination when you successfully investigate a mystery. Okay, so um. With now, are our abilities swapped as well? Yes. Oh, okay. no. Until you switch back. So we might have to explain to each other, like, how, how do I do this? So, Enoch, right. as, you're, as you're trying to figure out what happened here, something switched your consciousnesses, but it doesn't feel like it's a permanent thing. There's probably something you can do to switch back. You're just not sure what it is. But it would have to be very powerful. You can also see the magic as you're trying to figure it out. You, What does magic look like to Hawthorne? Hmm, I would say for Hawthorne, different magics, they're different colors. It's, mm -hmm. you know, like different on, you know, depending on the type of magic is, will radiate a different color. So you can kind of usually get an idea if this is like illusionary magic or something that's related to the elements or something like that. Like he can usually get an idea of what it is and that's how he can usually discern what he's dealing with. So whatever you would see would be colorful. You just see this like pinkish magenta glow around Hawthorne who is now in your body's head. Uh, what do you see? Somebody has been playing, been messing with us. Hold still, Enoch. I'm hold still, me. I'm Hawthorne. 
I hate this. I hate this too. Also, Hawthorne, did you roll too? I didn't roll because I didn't know if you wanted us both to roll, so I'll roll right now. Yeah. So, as you're rolling, um, Enoch casually walks over to Enoch's own body and pulls out a phone number from his pocket. Give me that. That would be an 11. Okay. You get two questions. I guess I would ask, and this would be more for like Enoch to tell me what he sees so I can answer it, what magic mm-hmm. was done here. Obviously, if he can describe what he sees, then maybe I would know what it is, knowing what I know about magic. We could kind of fold that into when you were asked, when you were talking about what he sees. Okay. When Enoch in your body, which is just a weird time, I'm just going to keep referring to you as your, like, normal character names, not the body that you're in. No, that's fine. That's confusing. (laughs) When Enoch describes the color your first thought is, it's some kind of psychic magic. Why do I see pink? It's psychic magic. Somebody's messing with our minds. Great. So the the two questions I would have would be, what sort of creature did this? I feel like I could just copy paste the answer. Powerful old trickster, not like one you've dealt with before, though. Oh, no. (sighs) It's got to be the work of a trickster. With what you're seeing, what I know about this kind of magic, it has to be a trickster. I guess the other question is, what is being concealed here? So as you think back, you have this, like, gap in your memories. And your thought is, like, whatever did this must have fogged up those memories for some reason. It's trying to hide something in your memories. It doesn't feel like it just did this for fun. It felt like this was done intentionally to conceal whatever it is, its motives, or your involvement in whatever the situation is beyond being very confused. I feel like like something was taken. Last thing I remember was us practicing for your date that you think you're going to have, and then... You're like going to walk into the Olive Garden and then blank. And then what do you remember? What's the last thing you remember? I remember us walking into the entrance of that restaurant they call the Olive Garden. I was confused because I didn't see olives are a garden, but then everything goes blank. Were we assigned a case? What, what's going on? I don't remember. We got to figure this out because uh, I know you love your body and I love my body just as much. I'd like to be back in it. So uh, I'm going to warn you right now, Um, you, you have not had... Yeah, your body is squishy and not very strong. Be careful when you open doors. You're going to rip them off the hinge. Yeah, I'm just going to let you open the doors. Good plan, good plan. So what are you doing with that phone number, Enoch? So Enoch goes, So Hawthorne, I'm just going to need two seconds. And I can't believe I didn't ask this. Where are we? What are we in? Are we like in a hotel room or something? That is the first thing we should have asked. How did we forget this? We got dropped in the trash can behind the Olive Garden. (laughs) (laughs) No, um, you look around, you're just in a stone room. Are are you pulling out the, are you pulling out your phone for the GPS or calling if someone's like, you said something about a phone number. Hey, be, be careful with my phone. Enoch was about to do the stupidest thing he could have ever done, but then he snaps and goes, mm, wait a minute. I was going to see about calling Mrs. Stax. Yeah, just let me pull that up. Here, um, Enoch, stand still. I ain't me. I'm Hawthorne. Hawthorne, just let me just put this back in my body. The person you're thinking about contacting, you don't have her phone number. There was a notebook, remember? Oh, yeah, the notebook. Oh, shit, this makes it even more worse, the fact that I pulled out the notebook. Just pulls a notebook out. Uh, uh, ne- never, never wrong thing. It's like, oh, no, wrong thing. Let's just put this back and pretend you didn't see that. Roll to manipulate somebody. Oh, man. <laughs> what was that? Oh, no. 
Also, I will let you keep your normal stats because it makes sense, except for maybe swapping out like tough. Oh no, that makes things worse. My tough is zero. Because I fail that. I fail that. I'll take the experience though. Yeah, you know I've leveled up last session. <laughs> no. With that failure I had to begin the session, I'm one away. Yeah. So Avionok is just like, oh just just don't worry about it. You know what Yonok looks like when he's yeah. lying, Hawthorne, and it's really weird seeing it on your face. Yeah, nothing. And then I think in my head, I'm going to have to look at this notebook later. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what was going to happen. Damn it. <laughs> so. The dice want to tell a story. <laughs> All right, Hawthorne. What about the weird people that locked you away for four days and yelled at you? I call them the people that don't know how to dress and they smell weird and I hate them. Oh. They're that wizarding group or whatever. It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, the Court of Wizards, I'm not going to them. That's just, do you know how much scrutiny I've been under? And if I walk in there as you, with you as me, and I couldn't solve this problem, they might take away my license. But they don't know I'm you. Oh, they'll know. You also don't know how to get to there because you don't know where you are. You're just in a stone walled room. Two sides are just normal plain stone wall, and then the other two sides have a door. So there's two doors and two plain walls? Yes. Hmm. It's a stone room. Enoch is doing something he's never done before. He's thinking. <laughs> Hawthorne's going to do something he's never done before. He's going to act. He's going to walk oh, over no. and open one of the doors. Let me just check this door. The handle probably bends a little bit because I am still don't know how to grab it properly. I'll go to the, the left door. Whatever door is to my left, that's the door I'll go through. Okay. Now I truly understand how you feel and Mrs. Stacks feel. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> you open the door and there's just a empty stone hallway ahead of you. Kind of drafty. A little hmm. creepy. I'm going to check the other door. And I walk over <laughs> with the other door. No, I was going to walk. Oh, oh no. Now I really know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> and Hawthorne's saying his head. I bet she knows how we feel now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I was going to listen at the door. Oh, okay. I'll just stand behind you. <laughs> Big shield. So you open the other door. It's a long hallway, but you see a glimpse of like a shadow darting across and roll plus sharp. Wow. Okay. I'm rolling good right now. Roll a six and a three. So that's nine. And then my sharp is plus one. We're keeping our current sharp, right? Yes. It makes sense to keep everything but tough because uh, okay. tough is physical when you are in different bodies. Oh, you get a plus three for that. Actually tough and weird, I would say, even, because weirds like use magic, because he would have access to my magic, in a sense, right? True. You get a plus three for your tough. And you get a plus two for your weird, if you don't, I don't know what you had before, but... Oh, man, I had three! <laughs> Enoch is very weird. <laughs> true, true. So as you see this shadow dart past, you remember something. You remember getting a call, like, you hadn't sat down in the Olive Garden yet when you got a call that something needed to be fixed pretty quickly. There was a powerful magical creature that they believed was being hunted by something. So they asked you and if you had anyone who could respond quickly to see if you could stop whatever's hunting this magical creature before it's too late because I'm not sure how many of this creature there are left in the world. And when you contacted Mrs. Stacks, they were still going the sweep have been very, very methodically testing to make sure her luck is, you know, back to normal hasn't been messed up anymore the only reason they aren't doing this to Enoch is because he's so weird they don't even know how to get a baseline for him, so they're just like, yeah, he's fine 
Plus, he's not technically part of their team, right? <laughs> he was exposed to it, but they're just like, he probably did like three tests, and they're like, eh, it's fine. What, why aren't we getting into, oh, oh, oh my. Just wave him on through. <laughs> I remember we were at the table and I got a call asking for help. Some creature was being hunted. I don't know. That's all I really remember. Do you remember anything like that? I will be honest with you, Hawthorne. I remember nothing. <sighs> Would you like to roll to investigate a mystery, Enoch? Oh, happily. So are you staying in the room or are you talking as you go to follow that weird shadow? I'm going to follow the weird shadow and talk as I walk. I roll a nine. You get one question. Okay. So... Hawthorne's already actually answered one of the questions that I would have wanted to ask about this shadow, because I'm going to assume this might be a creature we're looking for. Mm -hmm. What sort of creature is it? I know it's a trickster, but... Could be more. I'll say that you also saw the shadow. So, Enoch, you recognize the trickster spirit. The wolf. It's a wolf prowling these holes, looking for something. Enoch's going to put a small hawthorn-sized hand on his own body's chest and go, Dear God, how the, are you people supposed to keep me back? This is horrible. We don't keep you back. <laughs> now, this is, um, maybe we might need, so trust me for a second. Hey, I know you're here for a purpose. If you come out and talk to us, look, you put me in someone who can use magic. I could have started doing a spell the minute I walked in here. Come out and talk to us. I saw you, Wolfie. You're here for a reason. Tell us why. And why are we here? It's cold. Roll to manipulate someone. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, uh, it's, a, it's a seven. Why did I tell you you're only going to ruin my fun? You just hear it echo, that voice echoing, you can't tell where it's coming from. And that's when Enoch puts the end of his two fingers on the bridge of his nose and goes, uh, what is with you tricksters and what? You know, if you would stop this cryptic, st cryptic behavior and just... Learn to chill. We let you do what you want, but you do all this. And look, you put me in a body. I can't punch anything, so I obviously can't ruin your fun. I mean, I could cast a spell, maybe make a light, but there. I put all the cards on the table. I was bluffing before. Come on, Wolfie. Don't make me start having to make fun of you and comparing you to the three little pigs and the big bad. Come on hear a voice in your ear this time. Oh. I'm here because I'm hungry. Well, to act under pressure. Yeah, that makes more sense. Can I hear this thing too, or is it just in his ear? You hear it too, and the second voice sounds like it's a lot closer. This is going to be great because I rolled an 11. Okay. So you don't freak out. You don't look at this thing. Alaric, are you going to look back to see what where the voice is coming from? I think Alaric is just going to swing his hand back to try to hit it. Okay. Well, to kick some ass. Enoch, I'm in this big body. I might as well use it. Enoch, odds are even. Oh, 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 oh. oh no. Ten. <gasps> I rolled a ten. <laughs> so Enoch, odds are evens. Even. Congratulations, you didn't just hit Enoch. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I'm assuming because he had his hand on my back that I wouldn't hit him, but fair enough. Enoch's eyes are just wide. It's just... Oh, oh. As you swing your hand back and you feel it connect to something soft and furry, what do you want to do with that hand? All right, so let's see here. This is gonna hurt. <laughs> Just one of them. 
I'm going to... Your attack inflicts double the normal harm. Oh, no. Actually, you know what? No. I'll drive the enemy away en route. Like, I'll hit it to knock it away from us to make sure it's not, like, on us to attack us. I won't do the double the damage. You boot yeah. the snoot. As your fist heads in, you just send it flying back. Nice. And then you hear the voice. Oh, the magnitude like that. I'll never get out of here. Not if I get a hold of you. You'll never get out of here either. Switch us back. Please, I don't want to be small and squishy anymore. I don't want to be big and have to kill you. I don't see how that's my problem. If you'll excuse me, I have a meal to catch. When I get a hold of you, it will be your problem. Gone. <laughs> wait a minute, he's- wait a minute, what is that- wait, he says he's gonna go- oh god. Let's get- oh god, damn it. Well, I'm glad you found what was a hallway down the other door, let's- The hallway you just punched it down? Oh no! <laughs> well, it's alright. I'll catch it and crush it with your big body. Wanna ask it any questions? What, that thing? I thought it left. I mean, when you catch it, it's like, do you... Oh. How did we get here? <laughs> Change me or die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, oh god, my body is a horrible influence on him. <laughs> yeah, that and you've been rubbing off on him. <laughs> oh, let, let's run. I, we, we, oh... Let's move. <laughs> These legs are horrible. <laughs> Keep up, Enoch. <laughs> How do you people do this? You should be fine. I do cardio. <laughs> Enoch, you are experiencing a very, very new sensation. Or you will experience it tonight. You may not be experiencing it now. You're going to get a stitch in your side. Have fun with that. <laughs> That's not happening right now, but we'll see when that happens. So as you're continuing down the hallway, how are the two of you going to deal with this problem? You need to get the rest of your memories back, your bodies back, and find some way to protect whatever it is that you've been sent here to protect. We need to think about our memories. The last memory you hold, you get, think about it, hold on to it, and see if it brings any other things fresh to your mind. Also, I noticed when I saw the shadow, it brought back memories, so keep your eyes open. Maybe things we come in contact will bring up memories back. We could hold a thank real hard. Think real hard. Yes, I'd like to roll to think real hard. <laughs> New monster of the week move. Think real hard. <laughs> Investigate a mystery. Yeah. As yeah, that yeah. is also a mystery. Yeah. For me, that's going to be. No, that's another fail. That's six. And that means I level up. I don't think anything else, but I, I hit my marker. But it doesn't matter because I can't do anything because it's not in my body. <laughs> yeah. Also, slowly starting to forget that you're Hawthorne. Oh, oh no. no. It's just slow at first. Not enough to where it would be noticeable, but you keep, instead of thinking Enoch, you think I. Oh. Oh, boy. So, Enoch, what do you get for the investigative history? Or read about the situation. That works, too. Yay! I'll investigate a mystery. No! That's a three. <laughs> and you're starting to forget that you're Enoch. <laughs> oh, no! So you just wander around these halls, and you also both start to temporarily forget what you're doing. Like, every so often, you have the moment of, wait, no, no, I'm, I'm looking for something. Wait, 
I just stop as we're running. What are we doing here? Hawthorne, I mean, um, Enoch, what are we doing here? Didn't I just come back from the match? Wait, no, I don't be at that. I'm Enoch. What the? This is not good. Oh. I. So, Enoch is going to think more about how when he looked at. saw magic through Hawthorne's eyes that. It's like, all right. Is there any magic we can see? In, can he see any magic in these halls? Do you still get the additional question even if you fail the roll? Only if you succeed on, on a mess. It says, um, yeah, for the for the, when you successfully investigate mystery, you may ask no. what magic is done here as a free extra question. Chance. I'd like to read a bad situation though. So after he after we figure out his stuff. Enoch, do you want to maybe try using some magic? Oh no, the influences are going bad, but yes, I want to use magic. So you can um, observe another place or time to kind of look at it or just um, do one thing that is beyond human limitations? The first choice, actually. It's too bad I'm not you and you're you're me again because then I could change us back, but then I wouldn't need to because I'd already be me. <laughs> oh my goodness. What'd you get? So that's a 15. So who are you peeping on? I actually have a big question for this because something came to me as it's literally as if the same time as Enoch th- figuring this out because was that shadow even actually the wolf? I want to home in on that shadow because you never said the shadow was the wolf. Yeah, just same voice, but fair. So the idea is if it's the wolf, I'm trying to avoid that because I want to find the place and time to where whatever it was hunting his last step. Since you got a 15, I found a way to kind of give you a bit of the answers to the both. But I am curious, what does Enoch see? How does the spell look and feel, Enoch? Oh, this feels really, really weird. I'm asking Hawthorne, what does this feel like? Enoch is trying to search, right? I'm trying to understand, like, he's using this thing to locate something, right? Yes see another place or time he's trying to get a bead on where the wolf is a third eye opens up on his head and it glows as that is the eye that opens as your other eyes close and begin searching and once you, once you actually find it all three eyes are open it's like as if you're looking at it oh he, he figured out how to do that I also kind of pictures like sort of mentally reaching out, so it's almost like a magical like a location, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there is. I mean, obviously, you're you're with the third eye opening. That's like a psychic projection of you, your vision being able to go out and see other other areas. So it's like it projects, obviously not physically, but mentally, you're able to scan and search other areas with that third eye. Once you find whatever you're looking for, that's when your other eyes open as if all of them are focused on that scene or whatever that location is. And it doesn't take long for you to find it. And you see the shadow is indeed the wolf and it's prowling down a hallway, sniffing around and looking for something. And then like something catches its attention and it snaps and looks down a hall and you see something dart past the opening. And... You know, I had a shadow of a doubt that probably weren't expecting to see it. That's a rabbit that's about the size of a person. Oh, joy. I swear if his name is Peter. What do you see? I see the wolf. And then I just saw the rabbit. I know what it's hunting now. It's almost Easter. Read a bad situation. <laughs> Go for it. All right. Okay. Nine plus one. So ten. <laughs> All righty. Hold three. Wow. Da, da, da. 
what is the best way to protect the bunny? Catch or kill the wolf. Mm-hmm. Because it's having a hard time finding and keeping up with the rabbit, so there might be ways to sort of trick or mislead it. Mm-hmm. To go one direction instead of the other to possibly fall into a trap. I have an idea that's a little risky. Of course it is. One second. What is our best way in? And by in, I mean like to get to this wolf. Because this is what's the best way in, but we're already kind of in here. So. <laughs> yeah, wherever here is. Yeah. I'll say as you're wandering, you just kind of catch out the corner of your eye what looks like claw marks or scratch marks on the floor, like something took off really fast. Mm-hmm. And then you can look at that and sort of tell which direction it went. And it doesn't look like they were just made, but they were made recently. Mm. Huff, I mean, Enoch, look. Marks on the ground. Okay, this is fantastic. Mr. Hawthorne, I have a question for you. This is about your magic. Okay. Is it within your realm of power to cast an illusion to mislead someone's eye on yourself? Yes. Mr. Hawthorne, in that body, I am very powerful. Okay. If you put those prayer beads on your arm, you will summon my weapon. I trust you that you will be able to protect me. I just need you to trust me to know I'm going to bring it to you. Enoch would like to try to use magic to make himself look like the rabbit. Oh, I thought you were going to cast it on Bonnie Hawthorne's in. That could be funny, too. No, on, on Enoch, on himself, because this is part of his plan. But you should also know that with my magic, I can also banish spirits and things away from this place. So... There is a realization I came to, Mr. Hawthorne, and it's not just because I am in your body. It's something is targeting these specific dates, these specific holidays, these specific entities, and even if we banish said wolf, it's just going to come back again. We have to end it. Unfortunately, this will not end with just a simple banishment. Thankfully, I got you, and you're in my body. And I got you, babe. (laughs) In my body. (laughs) But Enoch is going to attempt to cast himself to the rabbit because he wants to start running down towards where the scratches are made. Okay. Also, Hawborn, did you have another question? I think you only asked two. I did have two. I guess... Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? Before we go charge down this hall towards this direction, there could be traps. We are dealing with the trickster, so. You don't think the wolf is what did this to you? There's something else involved that caused the squaw, perhaps trying to help the wolf. Oh, Enoch. You should know it's not just the wolf. I think there is something else here that's that's helping the wolf spirit. I don't think it was the wolf that switched us. They thought we wouldn't be able to adapt to the situation we're in. Maybe we would somehow inadvertently help lead the wolf to the rabbit. I mean, they're not wrong. I did open both doors. You, you think the wolf feeds doors? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not I don't know in this body. <laughs> I think we still have a chance to make sure this who's ever thinking that they're going to win this at the end. We're not going to let them have the satisfaction. Mm-hmm. And Enoch just starts to think real quick, like, oh, how did that stupid song go? They always say that rabbits. Okay, here we go. 
Hopefully, if he's able to turn himself into a rabbit, he will sing the Peter Cottontail song as he's going down the hall. Peter Cottontail, the bunny trail. Bunny trail. Hippity hoppity. Uh, East Peter Cottontail, it's the Easter Bunny. Easter's on its way. On its way. <laughs> yeah. So, for, well, first you have to. That's what I'm saying. If it works, let me roll the. Because I'll most likely need to roll use magic. Yes, you will need to roll to use magic. Although, Hawthorne, if you would like to roll to help out, sort of explaining to Enoch how the magic works. Yeah. I got a 10. Okay. Ah. Never mind. Don't think it is my help. <laughs> why he's doing this, why he's like trying to figure out how to cast it, I would assume I, I probably have like a spell book that has like things in there so he can like kind of look through as well. I'm going to be pulling, while well, he's not paying attention, while he's trying to figure out this spell, I'm going to look at that journal. I'll act under pressure to see if you can do it without him <laughs> noticing. Although I, I'll give you a plus one, because he is currently actively casting a spell. Hold on, real quick. I'm snapping the shot because this is a good one. Double sixes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't notice this at all as you cast your mind out and you find the rabbit and you can see where it's running and you actually see it it's a bit ahead of the wolf but it's still running really it's running and then it just kind of stops in this room and like crouches down and takes a breath and it's it's a big very magical looking rabbit um, I don't know if you've ever met the Easter Bunny but there is an Easter Bunny. It's probably not what you expected it to look like. And as it crouches down in a corner, you recognize the room that it's in and the room y'all just came from. It's coming in your direction. The real Easter Bunny? Yeah. Or it's the creature that the Easter Bunny was inspired by. Yeah. And was he able to turn himself into it as well with the magic? That has to be a separate role. Oh, I thought that's what he was doing with it. No, he was, he was finding where it was. So you know it is going to be coming your direction. All right, cool. Yeah, let me roll. Let's see if I can turn it into him. So, pausing on that, Hawthorne, would you like to roll uh, to investigate the mystery of the book? Oh, yeah. So I was able to pull that out without him seeing. Let's see here. Yeah. Reading this. Oh, no. <sighs> Double fives. Oh, I'm rolling no. these dice right now. These di dice are coming through. Double six is followed by double fives. And my sharpest plus one. They really want you to catch me. All right. <laughs> Your sharpest plus what? Plus one. So it's 11. Okay. So oh. you just get to hold two. Yeah. So what happened here in this journal? What's going on? What's what's happening with this journal? It depends. I haven't decided one function of how the turtle works. Hey, Enoch, high or low? Oh, no. Low. Hey, Enoch. Mm-hmm. Since you got the journal, have you used it? Yes. What have you been saying in it? He's been telling her everything. All his theories about what's going on and that he will guarantee her safety if she feels she's in danger and that he will personally negotiate for her to be <laughs> for her safety with Mrs. Stack's organization. Our odds are even. Uh, even. So, Hawthorne, as you're flipping through, you see all of that. There's some, like, spots where there's, like, blank spots or, like, gaps. But all you see is what Enoch has written. It kind of reads like a journal. Uh-huh. You see no other writing in it. My second question is, what is being concealed here? <laughs> oh, you sneaky devil. <laughs> I may not be able to read it, but I would know that something's being concealed there, right? Maybe. That's such a good one, though. It's it is really good. How do I want to answer that? <laughs> Since you didn't ask, what can it do? Well, I mean, I wouldn't think it could do anything off the top of my head because it's a journal, but I would say what is being concealed here. Because obviously there's, like, pages that are blank. He's writing. Like, it seems like something's hidden. So you know how sometimes when people journal, they do it like they're writing to someone, even though that person will never read it? Mm-hmm. 
feels kind of like that. But... That's what this is striking you as. So you aren't sure, like, who he wants to... He doesn't want people to know that he feels this way and wants to help whoever he's writing to. Based on what we talked about at the end of the last one, where he admitted on the... Well, he didn't admit, but the way he told the story... Also, just all of the context clues, yeah, he, he wants to help her. All right, I stick the journal back in, and hopefully I remember this. <laughs> we'll see. There will be a dice roll, because I like letting the dice set, because that's chaos. <laughs> so, hey, Enoch, let's get that magic roll to see if you can make yourself look like the East Bunny. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Every other time, dice is filled me the most important moments. It's got your back. It's a nine. So. Okay. I was about to say, if Alaric would like to roll to help out, talk through it. Nope. Nope. What did you get on the help out? I got a five total, so for help. Hmm. I'll decide what to do about that later. As you um, slide the journal back into the pocket. So on seven to nine, it works imperfectly. So you get to choose the glitch. I get to choose the effect of the glitch. Weakened, short duration, harm, draws immediate unwelcome attention, or has a problematic side effect. That's actually what I want, is I want the immediate unwelcome attention. Because as you told me, that the rabbit is coming from behind us. So the way this is gonna work is Enoch's gonna immediately turn around and as the magic starts working, he's running towards where the rabbit is coming from. You have been listening to Pseudonym Solo Adventures Holiday Brigade, a holiday themed monster of the week adventure featuring Brian from Dungeons and Pop Morgan from Mind Flayed Mondays, and Jess from Ballad of the Seven Dice. I have been your DM and producer, and if you enjoy this, feel free to check out our other shows over at Pseudonym Social. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash pseudonym social and follow us on Twitter at pseudonym social. Stay tuned next time to see what happens to the Holiday Brigade.